after last week's coverage of a lot of video games from Steam Next Fest, this time around this news is gonna be a little bit less video games, but I'm gonna make a few exceptions and the Crimson Diamond definitely deserves one because I've been following Julia Miramata's work for years now. Look at this EGA graphics. It's a typical 90s adventure game where you even have to type one of those Sierra inspired games where you walk around, you even type in verbs. Yeah, you will follow the amateur geologist and reluctant detective Nancy Maple to the ghost town of Crimson, Ontario, uh, where you will be investigated. The discovery of a massive diamond has a demo right now that you can play, but what we got to finally know is the release date. And yes, it's gonna come out very, very soon on August 15, so not even two months of waiting for this beautiful, wonderful, interesting game. No, you're not watching the Summer Game Fest episode all over again. This, in fact, is my article from my blog from 2021, three years ago, uh, when on Summer Game Fest, Metal Slug Tactics was announced. And what am I talking about it right now? Well, this last week was Steam Next Fest. And look at this, the most played demos of June 2024 in down in 8th place. Metal Slug Tactics. So after three years of waiting from the announcement, now you can play it. I mean, at least the demo you can. And look at these gorgeous, gorgeous visuals. It is just wonderful. Metal Slug, of course, is one of the old school OGs of really good pixel art from coin op machines. It had really, really smooth animation and everything. And uh, now, back then, it was a platformer. Now it is a tactics game. So really interesting reimagining with just as gorgeous pixel art as we are used to from metal slug i'm very excited about this one it's coming out at the end of this year if everything goes as planned what a great day the fertile crescent is finally out 1.0 version just came out last week and boy yeah if you're a fan of age of empires the fertile crescent is a captivating reimagining of classic base building rts inspired by the epic struggles of growth advancement and conquest in the cradle of civilization so what's new in 1.0 campaign mode we have overhauled artwork new map types war chariot units new technologies enhanced game mechanics improved ai and of course a lot of bug fixes very positive reviews all around it has multiplayer has all the features you would expect well 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 what do you know my favorite voxel pixel art game minecraft has a new update finally the tricky trials are here of course everyone's talking about the trials which is sort of like dungeons where you just have to fight your way through get some loot get different items upgrades new weapons a lot of cool stuff a lot of for everyone wanting to have a little bit of a challenging fights in minecraft this is definitely an update for you but what am i most excited about well, let's take a look. Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Is it this? Yes, it is. It's the Auto Crafter. Finally, we can make Satisfactory or Factorio inside of Minecraft because the Auto Crafter unit can just create these beautiful things that the crafter do, but automatically. Ah, I'm happy. I hope you're happy. This game is great. I'm gonna go play it right now. And now for something completely different, I promised. In random bits we explore all the other things that are pixel art or pixelated. And my favorite punk band, Hearst Pile Up. Hey, what a better way to release a new album than by making a video game about it. So Realize is, uh, yeah, it's a new song from Hearst Pile Up and you know, it's talking about all the cool things that punk <laughs> songs talk about, which is uh, how the government is shit and how we elect our officials only every five years. And then, you know, if you're not happy with the solution, well, you're stuck with them for five years. And then that's your democracy. And yeah, you can choose between things, but you know, you don't know who's gonna do it. Choose this person. I don't know. In any way, now we got a tank. But uh, well, yeah, what a cool, cool thing, you know, we had a bunch of music videos made in pixel art so far over the years, which is exciting. Uh, and yeah, we should have more. This is, of 
course just pixelated but look at this black and white low poly stuff you know it's retronator anything when we retronate 3d graphics into pixels and look at that dithering pattern i'm happy and when you reach the end and the hearses pile up at the very end you will get to an outro and you can click on the link and listen to the album gb studio 4 just got released uh, look at how cool this is so yeah gb studio you can create actual game boy games and it's an environment that is you don't have to know how to code it's all drag and drop it has support for various genres like top-down games platformers shooters it's all available for free up here on hio where you can get it make yourself a game and then the resulting games you can make them run in a browser on your computer in any emulator or yes on your real real game boy there's over 1000 games made with gp studio online on different hackathons and stuff so yeah a really cool thing to maybe try and make your own video game and we're going to finish off the do-it-yourself section with a wonderful overview of isometric projection or as CNG Mo Thomas Feichtmeier puts it, isometric games don't exist. Is it clickbait? Yes, but not really. If you're interested, it's very easy to find out because it's all free right up here on HAO. CNG Mo breaks things down very nicely of different perspective and parallel projections and very very meticulously go into the different namings of different specific projections and why we are misusing the name isometric. Most people in game development just feel like anything that's kind of top down we just call it isometric well that's not the case because it has a very specific thing and it has to have the 120 degrees between all the axes so he goes over across a lot of different ones and also explaining what are the reasons why they didn't go with perfect isometric 120 degrees it's all in the history and the limitations of video games and it's a wonderful wonderful read i did a little bit of checking as well a lot of times games like this they are just slightly off isometric games like commandos just a little bit off hades just a little bit off but there are some games for example monument valley when we got this was 2013 when we got two 3D engines that can render these things very smoothly and you got to some game designers that were actually obsessed by proper angles and everything, we did get proper isometric game, tunic as well, isometric proper. But let's say before year 2000, it's very likely there were no isometric games because of the inherent limitations of the computers and trying to fit everything into the squares it's very interesting very interesting topic indeed by the way i think it's completely fine if you call pixel like the normal two to one we just call it isometric it's close enough technically diametric i love that he calls it pixely so because yeah it's a pixel isometric it's what we the easiest to go with but it's really cool to know all of the intricate details so yeah thank you thomas for this wonderful guide 